Hello, welcome, and to celebrate the end of the year, I wanted to make a video discussing Yui Ikari and the events of Third Impact, and why overall Yui Ikari is a horrible person. At best, Yui Ikari is morally ambiguous. What she wants to do is eternalize herself in Unit 1 and be able to survive in space for all of eternity, being a testament to the fact that humanity existed even after the moon, the sun, and the earth are gone. At worst, she's an insane psychopath with a god complex that is willing to manipulate everyone and everything around her, including her husband and child, to achieve godhood and live on forever. Either way, she's insane. First, I want to mention some key factors. First of all, remember that Yui Ikari is sealed inside of Unit 1 after a failed contact experiment. So whenever Unit 1 loses control and goes into Berserker mode, that is Yui taking control of Evangelion Unit 1. This implies that Yui is indeed alive and aware of things around her. That means in situations such as during Asuka's fight with the mass production Evangelion when Asuka was about to die, she was deliberately choosing to let Asuka die and not allow Shinji to pilot and save her. We know Ava in Unit 1 is more than capable of breaking out of its encasement in Bakelite. Another interesting thing about Yui is that she is indeed, according to the classified information, a daughter of a higher up member of Sele. However, despite this, Yui's goals do not align themselves with either Sele or Gendo himself. Yui being in Unit 1 means Yui has had the ability to directly influence the human instrumentality when it does occur. It is also implied that in End of the Evangelion, after a brief exchange of words with Gendo, it is Yui who would act the scene when she transforms into a vision of Unit 1 and eats them alive. Some would argue that this is simply payback for the way he treated Shinji, who is the only other living being she seems to have any regard for or love for whatsoever. Back to the previous point, it is only after Maya announced it over the intercom that Asuka had died and Unit 2 had been destroyed that Yui decides to take action at Unit 1, making it very clear that she most certainly at the very least had no regard for Asuka's life and that for certain. This part is a little flimsier but I have a very hard time believing somebody as intelligent as Yui married Gendo not knowing the kind of person he was and not realizing that he would abandon Shinji and do the thing that he did in this kind of situation. I would be shocked if I found out that Yui married Gendo thinking he would be a good and loving father to their child. It is possible that Yui married Gendo knowing he would eventually become the head of Juhin, Nerd's predecessor and the organization that developed the Evangelion, as well as the Magi, and was perhaps using him the entire time, but that's more of a flat out guess. One thing that is for certain though is that she knows the after effects of at least her version of instrumentality. She knows that anyone that is able to believe in their heart that they exist will be able to return to their normal form. As if that fits in any, and that doesn't even include the fact that we have no idea what the after effects of Third Impact were on the planet. We know Second Impact killed half of the Earth population, as well as tilted the Earth off of its access to a point where Japan was put into an eternal summer and the rest of the world climate was affected as well, however we don't know how it was affected. That's not even touching the horrible effects that can impact had on the people of the world, such as the nuclear war that broke out between India and Pakistan, or Tokyo being destroyed by a nuclear bomb. So even if you accept the idea that others besides Asuka and Shinji will be able to return, which we're not sure if anybody else will be able to achieve, there will probably be at least a couple years of suffering for everybody on the planet due to the horrible ramifications of an event like Third Impact. Yui was willing to sacrifice the entirety of humanity in an event that she knew most people would probably not want to come back from for a long time, if ever. An event that would cause her son 
such trauma that it would break him mentally and cause him to wish death upon the entire human race. And let's not even talk about the fact that by the time the events of End of Ava take place, it is 100% certain that she knows what Shinji had been through due to the time he had spent inside of Ava in Unit 1. Remember, Yui's entire goal is to be permanently embedded inside of Unit 1 forever, as mankind's eternal memory and proof that mankind existed even after the Earth, Sun, and Moon are gone. The fact that she is willing to go through all of those things in order to achieve such a goal is insane. Aside from being trapped alone in space for the rest of eternity, she gains nothing from this except for the fact that she would escape the horrible nightmare that is third impact and any fallout from the event. And of course, any punishment that she would obtain for being involved in such an event. It is interesting to note that Yui's plans for third impact and human instrumentality, much like Thele and Gendo, depend entirely on Rei Ayanami going forth with the proper scenario. I think it's safe to assume that she would not have been able to go forward with her plan if Rei did not give control of whether or not he would like to reject or accept instrumentality to Shinji. Her plan is also somewhat dependent on Shinji, as it is Shinji that wishes for everybody to die and triggers instrumentality in the first place after Akka rejects him one final time, causing him to snap. It is also worth noting that Gendo wasn't purposely trying to hurt Shinji, but afraid that him and Shinji would form a bond and end up hurting each other. The Hedgehog's Dilemma. Yui's plan needed Shinji to be psychologically traumatized and for him to be depressed enough to trigger instrumentality. While it is undeniable that Yui did seem to love Shinji on some level, at the end of the day, she used Shinji as a pawn just like she did everybody else. Gendo certainly doesn't seem like the kind of person that would desire a child, so part of me wondered if Yui had a child out of love or a desire to use that child a part of her plan for instrumentality. So overall, Yui Hikari is a monster that was willing to go to unbelievable lengths to achieve her goals, even at the expense of the rest of humanity and her son's life. If you liked the video, leave it a like, and tell me in the comments section down below whether or not you think Yui is a monster, or you think she's the pure goddess-like being that some believe her to be. I hope you enjoyed the video, I figured it would be an appropriate kind of topic to end off the year on as third impact does take place on december 31st as you all know i love talking about evangelion it's my favorite anime and getting to talk about yui hikari who i actually haven't had a chance to talk about at all really on this channel was a nice treat because yui hikari is a character we know almost nothing about but if you have anything you would like me to talk about in relation to evangelion post it in the comment section down below i could always use ideas because there's probably a ton of stuff that i just haven't thought of yet because it's always the cake with Ava. but above all else guys have a great day and happy new year